just was hungry. At Caspian Acres, there's a menagerie of mouths to feed. There's chickens, ducks, and guinea fowl. They roam alongside a rather proud turkey and everything else that's farmed here. Sheepies! The sheep and pigs are more than content with the tubs of fruit, veggies, and restaurant waste tossed their way. But when Aras Bali Mahagdam and his wife Anastasia hey guys. expanded their brood of birds, it hit their bottom line. Who's when we started raising um, ducks, and chickens on the farm. We realized we quickly that um, we weren't making any money uh, selling the duck eggs and uh, chicken eggs because all the feed cost was so high. They were having to buy a protein feed that contained soy, but the cost was threatening to derail their whole dream of running a sustainable farm. Yeah, yeah, here's where the fly room is. Aras, whose background is in computer science, yeah. looked for a solution, and he found one in a fly. Well, actually, in its larva. Here is a tray with a whole bunch of eggs on it. So there's hundreds of thousands of larvae in this little section. That oh, are these gonna, are all eggs. These are all eggs. So that is just over half a gram. They can be seen more clearly under a microscope. Here we have a whole bunch of flies that are turning into prepupae. Once they hatch, they become larvae and are high in protein. Perfect food for his hungry birds. So how much trial and error has there been to get to this point? Tons and tons of trial and error. We, I, I've just been, uh, I've had them fail in about every possible way that it could fail. These larvae come from the black soldier fly, an insect that needs to be in a warm, humid environment. In his first few attempts, the flies died. Once he got the temperature right, there was another issue. The flies wouldn't mate. Some people on the internet were saying that uh, if you play some type of music, then they start mating more. Uh, I tried that, actually just wanted to see if uh, it's true, but uh, I didn't know. What, what music did you play? I played a lot of disco and like uh, a lot of like uh, dance music. <laughs> was not doing it for the flies. <laughs> no, no, okay, they just they weren't into it. Thankfully, the flies ended up sorting that part out on their own. And Aras is now a full-fledged bug farmer, albeit on a much smaller scale than what's happening in Langley, BC. So here we have our Intera Grubs product. So as you can see, it's just the whole larvae dried, nothing added to it. These millions of larvae are destined to be turned into feed. And Terra is one of the world's largest companies betting on the black soldier fly. I think it's the greatest thing in the world. So. And Victoria Leung came on board after responding to an ad on Craigslist that asked prospective hires if they wanted to change the world. There's limited resources on this planet. There's only so much arable land we have to grow crops and food for people. There's only so much water that we can utilize. And so I think it's really important that the world is looking for more sustainable ways of growing our food. And how do the larvae help with that? Well, for one, they grow really quickly. Their life cycle from egg to when they're ready to be harvested is about three weeks. And in that time, they grow one million percent of their weight. They are voracious eaters. Just watch as the larvae tear apart this hamburger. At Antara, they're fed mountains of produce. Most of these fruit and vegetables still look great, but by the time they make it to the grocery store shelf, they'll be past their prime. So what would end up in the garbage gets trucked here instead. The larvae don't need any water and take up very little space before they're turned into feed for pets, poultry and fish. It's about 40% protein, 40% fat. And the company is hoping one day also you and I. We see that as being the holy grail. We think we're probably a few more years out of it than, uh, than we'd like, but we've certainly seen the trend for insects take off in the human food uh, market. Who's hungry? Back at Caspian Acres, they haven't snacked on the larvae themselves yet, but they feed them to their ducklings and all the other birds. But there's no large industrial operation here. These ones were baked uh, in the oven for a low temperature, <laughs> you know, kind of dry them out slowly. Um, and then some of them are just strained through uh, material to try to get excess moisture out of it. Um, so you just put these fun. kind of like on a cookie sheet? Exactly! Or a sheet? Just, yeah, just like you with granola. <laughs> yeah. Instead of granola, they're bugs and they get the food to feed the bugs from the local food bank, which has a program to help cut down on food waste. So here's an example of a bin. We fill up the truck every second day, and this whole food will last about uh, one day at the farm. We'll use it up. 
So this is the black soldier fly frass, basically their poop. As for all the waste the larvae produce, well, that gets used too in compost. We always kind of wanted the farm to be a combination of different animals and wanted to make everything kind of work together. So when we looked at it and we sort of started reading it, it felt like missing puzzle piece. And now that they've overcome all of the challenges in raising and harvesting the larvae, they're thinking about becoming breeders so they can help others learn the basics of farming bugs. Who's hungry? Briar Stewart, CBC News, near Kamloops.